example. Imagine that the Nazis had succeeded in taking over the whole world. And the whole of humanity had been indoctrinated that it was a very good thing and a noble thing to kill every single Jew. By the way, um, you know, just as a side point, you know, I, I always find it strange that some Muslims seem to be, some Muslims seem to get caught up in this, oh, there weren't really six million Jews killed. Or, I, I don't really understand that. It, you know, okay, two million, six million, who, you know, what's the point? I mean, you know, slaughtering human beings en masse is a terrible thing, whatever the number is, number one. Number two, what? You think Europeans aren't capable of slaughtering people en masse? Actually, they're very good at it. They have a nasty propensity in their history for doing it. It's the facts. And uh, just to remind everyone that number two on Hitler's list of uh, inferior races after the Jews was indeed the Arabs. Just to remind you of that. Um, so anyway, imagine the Nazis took over the world and they persuaded everybody that it was a good idea to kill all Jews. Therefore, according to the atheist evolutionist concepts of good and evil, it therefore would become good. Which I am pretty sure that I certainly believe that it is evil. It always is evil irrespective of how many human beings may consider it to be good, it is evil to try and wipe out a race of human beings based upon some racial prejudice. But I believe that absolutely because I have an absolute standard of morality that is not defined by me or my family or my friends or my tribe or my nation, or my civilization, it is defined for me as I believe by God. And if you don't have that transcendental meaning, it is something outside human events, then you have no real claim to claim that anything is really absolutely evil. It's only evil according to a particular circumstance. So the whole argument of the atheist anyway, of the problem of evil, is a duplicitous argument from their point of view. It's not honest from their own assessment of things. Yet they use it very effectively and very emotively. There are lots of issues surrounding the problem of evil. And there are many problems defining what is evil, even if you don't believe in God. What makes something evil? What makes it so bad? Is it willful intent? Does that make something evil because we willfully intend to do some harm to someone? Or is it something evil simply because of the end result? These are issues that people who don't believe in God are still trying to figure out and still trying to discuss. Does evil exist as a separate entity? Or is evil, in fact, merely the absence of good? That's an interesting question. Because it presumes, therefore, that human beings are good. How about presuming the other way around, that human beings are evil and that good is just the absence of evil? <laughs> I mean, you know, you can think about this in many, many different ways. I remember reading in a book on philosophy a little statement that has stuck in my mind until today. And the writer said that in his opinion, the philosophy of ethics 
is actually no more than a rationalization of our prejudices. The philosophy of ethics is really no more than a rationalization of our prejudices. And actually what is really scary is how easy it is to rationalize our prejudices. It's very easy to rationalize one's evil. I mean, we go back to our example of, you know, Nazi Germany and Hitler exterminating Jews. And it wasn't just some random thing. Of course, he had a whole process of rationalization for that. What the Jews had done, how they, according to him, were sucking the nation dry, they were and so on and so forth, and the harm that they caused, and you know, any brung historical arguments, economic arguments, these are all rationalizations of his prejudice. And it's actually very easy, and I'm sure every single one of us, sadly, do this all the time. We rationalize our evil. We try and explain it away. We try and make it out as if the bad things that we are doing are really not so bad after all because of A, B, C, D, whatever. These are our rationalizations. Anyway, there are so many topics and so many issues that we could discuss around this problem of evil and it's only supposed to be, I'm only giving you a taster, an introduction. But fundamentally, the reality is, is that the lecture today is really not about that particular subject and I just really wanted to introduce these ideas. What I want to go back to is my premise. My premise is that there is a God. That this universe does have a creator. And therefore to really deal with today's topic, why does God permit suffering on the earth? The reality is, is the only way that we could have certainty in respect to the answer to this question is if God tells us. That's, that's the only way we could know. Because the reality is human reason has limitations, quite severe limitations. And I would just like to demonstrate the severe limitations of human reason. Can anyone tell me what is behind that door over there? Can anyone tell me? There's no one in this home, whole room that can tell me what is behind that door? How many of you know? Hands up, university students, please. Hands up, university students. And I guess this is the medical school, so I don't know how many of you. If you're, if you're a medic, can you put your hand up as well? Keep your hand up. Yes, yeah, still a few of you. I mean, you know, seven years you're going to be studying, and, you know, our lives are going to be in your hands. Please tell me what's behind the door. I'm scared now. Well, I'm not really, but, you know. I mean, I can't expect you to know. I, if someone actually worked here, and do you know what's behind the door? Really? Air? Yeah. 